By the time Missouri Governor Jay Nixon went on television yesterday to announce the midnight curfew for residents of Ferguson, we'd already gone off the air here on MHP. But friend of the show, Dorian Warren, who was with me at my table yesterday, stuck around and joined my colleague T.J. Holmes at his table during the news conference. After it ended, Dorian weighed in on the historical precedent to what the governor had to say. What you just said, Raul, when the sun goes down, here is the historical context for this. I mean, if you were black in an all-white town, you could not be in that town when the sun goes down, and it was a threat to your safety. Historian and author James Lowen, the man who literally wrote the book on sundown towns, uncovered thousands of these towns that existed in the United States throughout the 20th century. By some estimates, as many as 10,000 sundown towns had sprung up across the country by 1970. Some were the warning to African Americans not to let the sun go down on you was an unspoken rule that spread by reputation. Others, where the warning was explicitly spelled out in signs posted along the highway or at the town or on the county line. But all of them, whites only spaces, where being black after dark could mean arrest, harassment, assault, or worse. In 1968, 21-year-old Carol Jenkins was selling encyclopedias door to door in the sundown town of Martinsville, Indiana, when she was stabbed in the chest with a screwdriver and left to die in the street. So for African-American travelers, making the choice about where to stop for food, gas, or a bathroom break, or a rest for the night was potentially a life or death decision. It is in part what prompted the publication of this, the Negro Motorist Green Book. This handy guide let African Americans on the road know where they could find safe harbor and where they need to steer clear of the threat of white violence in sundown towns. The Green Book started to become obsolete when the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 outlawed racial discrimination in public accommodations. But that history of restricting travel and access to public spaces for African Americans seemed very present last night in Ferguson, where the streets, the people were warned to stay out after midnight in a town they normally call home.